The character of the news changed from the time I did the newsroom until it changed radically. And, and really what the newsroom was satirizing was the mainstream news. Now, the game has completely changed. It's not even the idea that they're creating a narrative for you which is just comes out of the editorial department has nothing to really do with reality. There's whole other agendas. What's that? That is our new logo. Nation, faith, news, and money? That's the slot line. His character was first developed uh, when I kind of looked at the CBC News and tried to imagine, I had no idea, I'd never worked in the CBC News, I just tried to imagine the, the kind of personality that might flourish within that you know, corporate structure. And I want cops in dress uniform beating uh, African drums. I don't want the cops in uniform beating African drums. I want the cops in uniform, I want beating African drums, the US flag burning. I know it's the US, but it looks good. Jesus on the cross, cop cars careening, sirens flashing, a cocaine haul. His personality is one of the difficult and unproductive and unlikable kinds of characters that one finds in the real world. He takes no responsibility, and he's he's kind of uh, uh, psychopathic, and he can't he can't distinguish between what's really important and what's not important. It's it's just about his self interest. Everyone's calling you guys Fox News North. Do you personally have a right wing agenda? I have no agenda, I, I, uh, but I but I do have priorities, and my number one priority has been and always will be journalistic integrity and the truth. I've been told, sir, that your first priority is your personal toilet, sir. Well, it's not my first. Uh, you know, I'm the head of. You know, I mean, it's in my con. He doesn't know how to handle relationships, clearly. Yeah. Are you doing a flight? Do you love me? Lo uh, do I love? Uh... Just a little. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Have a good trip. Yeah. I was watching the show on the polar bear where they're part of the chain of life, meaning they eat animals smaller than themselves uh -huh. and they are eaten by animals bigger than them. Uh -huh. I didn't watch the whole show, but I was thinking after, uh -huh. what's bigger than a polar bear? I mean, <laughs> maybe an elephant, but yeah. there are no elephants in the Arctic to my knowledge. Um, this is me. <laughs> oh. I was going to go in for a shower and if you want, even though I don't do it on a regular basis as a professional anymore, we could have a quick funk. Exactly. He's always sort of sliding away, backing away, in denial, holding on to the job. Doug is George's best friend, sort of like his sounding board. And uh, they just sort of waste time together, talk about things together. Some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't make a lot of sense. But they seem to get something from each other. What thing on my lip? There's a little red thing on your lip. That's how it starts. I'm not saying you have it, but this thing is becoming resistant to antibiotics. And if you do have the resistant strain, it could eat your head in a matter of days. And that's just one example. He is a gregarious fellow. Um, he celebrates his uh, lack of intelligence. Everything would die. Men, women, domestic help, dogs, fish. Well, thank you so much for that, Tony. My pleasure. Are you thinking about getting liposuction on the cheap in Mexico? Well, think again. Shandy is the host of a morning show called Shandy in the Morning, which is, uh, she's the ebullient, slightly dumb host of her own show. The cat was just bald and burned and it perished from its injuries. Sorry to interrupt, or to be more precise, I don't want anyone to fucking move. I can say fuck about every two words, put it that way. Um, so I get to have my way. He's basically the um, eyes and ears of the old man who owns the, uh, who owns the TV station. I do all the hiring and firing, so uh, I've you know, found Mr. Finley, and uh, it's my job to keep him on the straight and narrow, as it is to keep everyone on the straight and narrow in the office and this, uh, getting this TV station up and running. Dinosaurs. <laughs> Simply God's little trick. And it's a beautiful trick. He's tempting us not to believe in him. He's a right-wing, conservative, racist, hypocritical schmuck. And uh, he believes in the free market economy and Jesus Christ and uh, uses them to further his own ends. And, 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 you, and, you, and you just, uh, you know, kind of... Slapped her on the ass. She get you a donut.
Get your coffee, always with the have a nice day. Then one little pat on the ass and she snaps, like some left-wing New York Femi Nazi bitch. Uh, well, uh, well, she, she said. She said, she said, she said. He said, la, la, la. <laughs> Welcome to the feminist game, my friend. I'm sure the creep has his hand right up her skirt, but that's administrative, not my area. You're the executive producer of his show. Yeah, which puts me in charge of one thing only, his numbers. If people watch him because he's a creep, it's fine with me. But he's got this whole Christian routine going, and he's... Fine, crucify him, nail him to the cross, tape him dying of thirst and starvation every night for a month while crows pluck out his eyes. I mean, I can sell that around the world. This is a beautiful concept. It's a rich, rich concept. Such a huge fan of Ken, and the scripts are so good. I mean, they're so good. I really do think he's an amazing creative force. I love the satire of it, and uh, but it's also biting and it's truthful. Everything is about the pursuit of truth. Everything is about showing falsehood. And, and, and trying in every situation, whether it's about George getting his own bathroom or not, private bathroom, or whether it's about whether we should hire an Asian woman or a person of color. There's always this pursuit of truth.